hello, hello, and welcome to Unapologetically Priscilla. Today's episode, y'all, we are going to break it down. I know there are so many people out there who are trying to figure out, should they let a relationship go? Well, there are many relationships that we have in our lives, but today we're not talking about family relationships, we're talking about significant other relationships. That is a very sensitive and touchy subject, but we're going to dive right in. Y'all, there are five ways that I have determined that you can tell if your relationship is over. And I am speaking from experience. This is not something someone told me. This is not something I read on Google. This is something that I have lived and experienced. So the number one reason that I found to know when a relationship is over, communication will stop. And when I say communication will stop, I mean The things that y'all used to talk about, y'all would no longer talk about. The things that y'all used to plan together, y'all would no longer plan those things together. Communication, when I say communication, I mean, let me break it down. A lot of people think communication is only verbal, but the body language it tells you a lot. People communicate all the time with their bodies, right? So if a person is kind of, you know, standoffish, um, they get irritated when you touch them. Um, they don't want to hear anything that happened good for you at work, or they don't want to hear anything you have to say. It's like you are talking to a brick wall while you are talking to them they are in their phones on social media or texting someone else so that is a number one sign this person is trying to leave the relationship or the person has already left the relationship they are mentally gone but they are physically trying to find the exit door and when i say trying to find that means They are waiting on the next person to take them in or swoop them off their feet to rescue them from you, only to find out the grass is not greener on the other side. Yes. So the number two reason um, or way to know that your relationship is over, they become distant. Distant is almost just like lack of communication. I'm distant. I don't want to be touched by you. My emotions are so far away from you that the new person can feel them already. That's just how a person becomes. They don't want you to touch them. If you touch them, as I said before, in the communication um, spill, when you are touching them or trying to play with them or any kind of physical contact, they act real distant. And then people can be distant in their emotions. And this is what I mean by that. This emotions mean I can hurt your feelings and have no remorse or no regret to hurting your feelings. So my emotions are attached from your emotions and I no longer care about how you feel. That what I mean about being with the emotions because usually when a person hurt you they will come back and say you know hey I'm sorry I didn't mean to say that or I didn't mean to to do that but a distant person they will say anything to you they will do anything to you and they will not come back and apologize that's real talk Listen, a lot of times, I had to give myself a round of applause on that one. That was good stuff. A lot of times, 
we try so hard to bring a person back to how it was when we first got together. And one thing you got to realize in relationships, that newness will wear off. And once it wear off, what do you have that's going to keep you and this person together? Do you trust them? Are they loyal? Do they go out of their way to make sure you're happy? I mean, you got to have something after the newness wear off. You got to have something to keep you together. Because when the newness is gone and the butterflies are all flown away, what are you going to do to keep your relationship rooted and grounded? Now, I'm going to tell y'all at the end of my five ways to know your relationship is over, I'm going to tell you real quickly five ways that you can keep your relationship together. So, the third way to realize or know your relationship is over, they start playing games. Yeah, they start playing games. So when I say start playing games, these are the kind of games, and they are cliche because of what the average person do. When they start playing games, they start getting the homeboys or homegirls to lie, to say, tell her or him that I've been with you all night long. That's one way they are lying. They were not with the homeboy or the homegirl all night long. I personally had um, somebody close to me. They told their husband that they were with me and it's for something in the morning. The husband called my phone. I am in a totally different location, have not talked to the person all day long. Now, I am not a liar. So when the husband called, he was like, hey, can I speak to such and such? And I'm like, uh, it's 4.30 in the morning. I'm sleeping right now. I'm not with such and such. Well, she told me that you were with her. Well, I do apologize, but I am at my cousin's house, way in a different town. I am not with your wife. But I tell you what I will do. I will give her a call since she's not answering the phone for you, and I will let her know you are looking for her. Sorry. Have a great night. Listen, that's what I mean by playing games. Another way they play games, they will tell you they got to go to work early or they got to get off late. Those are the number two signs on that part about start playing games they either going to work early they were required to work um overtime so i gotta go in early or they making me work over and i gotta work late and then when you uh, find out the real truth everybody got off at the same time nobody had to go in early and nobody had to stay late Hmm, makes you wonder, don't it? Listen, I'm going to have so many people probably frustrated with me because I know a lot of people, they already know the signs. They just don't want to admit it. But I'm going to help you admit it, okay? I'm going to help you get out of bondage because I can assure you, after being married multiple times, it's not as bad as you think. Being single is not as bad as you think. I promise you, it's not as bad as you think. But I will say this. Sometimes being single may get lonely, but I would rather go to bed and sleep alone than to have someone in and cheating on me. I would rather have somebody that I can trust and, and grow old with, somebody that I'll never have to second guess. So, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next one. So the next one is going to be the fourth way to know when the relationship is over. All sexual 
contact has ceased. You are no longer romantic or showing affection towards each other. The kisses are... There's no more physical tongue kissing. When a person is in love with you, they will tongue kiss you until the sun goes in. But when they fall out of love with you, all you get is that every other, um, what they say, like Chris Rock said in the movie, um, Down to Earth, I think it was Down to Earth. Hey, I'm home. Hey, I'm leaving. Hey, that's how kisses get. It's like, what do you call them? Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to say meaningless kiss. <laughs> that's what they are. But there's no more romance. Nothing about your relationship is romantic. You don't do romantic outings anymore. You don't go out to eat. You don't do picnics. You don't do anything around the house romantically. It's almost as if you are roommates. And I'm speaking from experience. I'm telling you, I have went through all of this stuff that I'm telling you about. I would not tell you anything that I have not went through myself. So... The, the sexual contact, contact, you can beg them to have sex, sex with, with you, you and, and they still will come up with an excuse as to why they cannot have sex with you. And sex is not the number one thing in a relationship that can ruin it, but I would definitely say it's number two. Without sexual contact and romance and affection, how can you keep, keep the spark in your relationship? Now, if you got health issues and you no longer can physically have sex, you got to learn how to make love to this person spiritually, mentally, and, you know, even if you just cuddle and watch a movie with the person or do some type of foreplay. And I'm so sorry, this is adult content, so I hope there's no children listening to this podcast. But you got to show some kind of affection. You know, even if you are married and let's just say you're married. Listen, the only reason I would recommend sex is by marriage. I would not recommend it based on experience. I would not recommend having sex with anyone that you are not married to because that's a whole nother podcast episode where we can talk about how spirits transfer and soul ties that you have with people that you've had sex with. Yeah, that's a whole nother story. But anyway, it's crazy how people can live in the same house, say that they love you, and say they are in love with you, but they don't do anything to please you sexually. Now, that's pretty um, that's pretty rare, if you ask me. And you know what? I'm going to do a, um, a podcast about a lot of undercover men who are down low, but they are marrying women to try to cover up what they really are. Yeah, that's a whole nut. Listen, I am coming up with so many relationship topics just off of this one relationship topic. Wow. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Thank you, God. But anyway, if all the sexual contact and romance and affection stop, their relationship is over. Go ahead and accept it and move on. Okay, number five. When they mentally leave the relationship, mentally, I no longer see myself in this relationship. I cannot see myself with you a year from now, two years from now, 10 years from now. I am mentally out of the relationship. All I'm waiting on now is for my body to physically leave this relationship. And I'm telling you, I have been in that type of relationship where I'm just, I'm just rolling with the flow. I no longer care about what you do. I don't care about who you with. I don't care where you spend your money. I don't care. I'm just waiting on the right time 
to walk out of this relationship or you are waiting on the right time to walk out of the relationship. Many people stay in relationships because financially they can't leave. They don't have enough money to get their own place. Secondly, they don't want to go back to their parents' house. Third, they don't want to go stay with their homeboys or homegirls because they know that they're going to look like a failure. Fourth, they don't want to spend the money to get their own place. So they would rather leech off of you until you get tired of them. You recognize the game and you say, you know what? Mentally, you are out of the relationship. So physically, let me help you leave. Pack your stuff. Go ahead. Back to your mom's house. The only way a person like that will leave the relationship is if they are forced out of the relationship. And it's sad to say, but it's a lot of men and women who are in relationships that they are not mentally in. They are physically there. And it's because of them being in need. A lot of people are not looking for love. They are looking for help. And those are my main five reasons. Oh, and um, another part to that mentally leave the relationship, I wrote a little side note. They no longer include you in activities. They always say, me and such and such, we are going with him and his old lady. We're going out to the bowling alley or we're going to see a movie, but you're never invited. Or he goes to his parents' house. Normally he would take you, but now he's no longer taking you. Um, sports events, he don't take you to those anymore either. So now that lets you know, hey, if he's not inviting me out, to um, events that we know together. This man is over me. Um, if you want to reconcile with him or her, try to get it together, find ways to put the spunk back in, in your relationship and reconcile. Now I got one bonus that I wrote. Um, I wrote on the paper also. I put uh, physically leave the relationship, they will finally get the courage to leave you. They will move in with a home with a homeboy, homegirl, their parents, um, auntie, uncle, friend, anybody just to get away from you. Now, this is what I recommend. Once they physically leave the relationship, by all means, do not I mean, with all capital letters, do not start back having sex with this person or communicating with this person. Do not be on social media doing the tit for tat. Do not do subliminal messages. Do not do indirect messages, subliminal. They all, it's all the same. Do not do it. Let me tell you why. You are not making that person look bad. You are making yourself look bad. I promise you, you will not be hurting them in any way, shape, form, or fashion. So I have been down that road and I can tell you the time, the energy, or the attention, the person. When it's over, when they are physically out of your life, close that door and move on. Listen. I can tell you from experience, I was I went through a divorce and I just knew that my life was over. I was so hurt. I was devastated. I was crying. I lost weight. I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. I was praying, God, take it away from me. If you can't take it away from me, Lord, just take me off this earth. But let me tell you something about God. Whew. Honey. God came in, the first thing he did was healed my broken heart. And after he healed my broken heart, he healed my troubled mind. And after he healed my broken heart and healed my troubled mind, God gave me strength. And after he gave me strength, I could walk on and leave that trouble behind. You know, a lot of times we pray, God, put us back together. Lord, please put us back together. But you know, we pray 
to be in a relationship that God never put us in in the first place. We got to stop begging and pleading and asking God to keep us somewhere he do not want us. You can't prosper there. All they want to do is be selfish and draw you into their world, what they have going on. You can't be the real 100% you because you are too busy wrapped up in somebody else's dreams and ambitions and you putting all of your dreams and ambitions and goals on hold. I've been there. I've done it. Trust me. And what did I gain from it? I gained a little experience here and a little experience there, but it wasn't anything that was going to change my life for the better. I can assure you that if you go ahead and shut the door to this meaningless relationship, this relationship is draining you of your physical energy. You don't like being around your friends no more. You don't like to smile no more. You don't laugh. You just going alone, just being tortured. That's what I call it. You're being tortured. You do not deserve to be tortured by anyone, male or female. And if you are in an in, in abusive relationship, you need to seek help through the authorities, and they have different um, um, agencies in your community where you can reach out. I know um, Safe Haven or something like that was for battered women. It's a lot of different ones that you can reach out to. Matter of fact, I'm going to research the ones that are nationwide, and I'm going to leave their information in the description box. Um on this podcast because there are a lot of women and men who are being mentally and physically abused and they feel trapped. If you need help getting out, then I'm going to leave the um, information in the description box down below. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be typing while I'm on my podcast. But um, I was going to give y'all some ways to keep the relationship alive. But I think right now I'm just going to end it on this note on stopping um, domestic violence because that is a touchy subject. A lot of people are in relationships because they are afraid to leave. If I leave, he may kill me or she may kill me because, believe it or not, people will threaten you all throughout the relationship. I have been threatened. If you leave me, I will kill you. I actually left someone and they sent a threat and told me that they were going to chop my body up into pieces and feed me to the alligators. And that is no lie. And so I'm telling you, it's nothing to play with at all. If you are in a relationship, and I don't care how many years you have been, whether it's been one week, one month, one year, 10 years, 15 years, if you are not happy, if the relationship is no longer growing, you need to find a way to escape that relationship. You're only hurting yourself. Mentally, you're draining yourself. You can't be active like you once were. You got to find the happiness that you once had before you got into this toxic, toxic relationship. I promise you, I am leaving all the information in this description box because I just feel it in my spirit that somebody is trapped in a relationship and they got children involved and they are afraid to get out of this relationship for the sake of the children. Well, I'm speaking right now that you will be freed from this bondage. Your children and you will be saved. If you are the person that is trapped in this relationship, you are being abused, the children are being abused, but you don't have the strength to leave, 
I am leaving some information in the description box. All you got to do is make the call. You got to trust God that once he move you out of this relationship, you will succeed. You will be protected. God will not allow anything to happen to you. You got to come out of this toxic relationship. It's draining you. You can't even work and focus on you. You don't dress up the way you used to. You just let yourself go. You know who you are. Whoever you are listening to this podcast, you got to get out of that relationship now. You can no longer stay there any time, any more time. Let me say it the right way. If you spend any more time in this relationship, it may be too late for you. You got to escape now. The enemy is plotting against you and your children. You got to get out of that relationship. In Jesus' name, you will be free. But y'all, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this podcast. Um, Those are my five ways that I... It's really more ways. But those, I narrowed it down to those five. But there are many, many, many ways to know when a relationship is over. And I'm going to tell you the God heaven truth. A lot of people know when the relationship over before they even get into the long haul. You know the relationship is over, but you will try your best to hold on because you the type of person you don't want to hear people say, I told you so. I was that person. I stayed in a relationship just because I didn't want to hear, I told you. Mm Mm-hmm, I told you. Well, it cost me a lot of things by staying, and I wish I had the strength to get out. Y'all, this is the end of my podcast and episode five ways to know your relationship is over. I would like to say a quick prayer and go ahead and wrap it up after the prayer. Thank y'all for tuning in. And until next time, y'all stay prayed up, stay blessed, and keep God first. And next Thursday, y'all, I promise you, Apostle Renee Hill will be on um, the podcast. Um, I am so excited. She has been through a lot. And I'm not going to tell everything that she has been through, but she recently just got a divorce from an apostle. And it was dirty laundry, y'all. Dirty laundry. But she would be the one to tell y'all about that, okay? So let me go ahead and say a quick prayer, and then I'm going to wrap up the podcast. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you again, Lord, for allowing us to see this day. Thank you for keeping us throughout this day, Lord. Thank you for keeping us from hurt, harm, and danger. Lord, I thank, the, thank you for keeping your angels around us protecting us from danger seen and unseen. If there's anyone out there, Lord, in a toxic relationship, they want to leave, they don't know how to leave. Father God, give them the strength right now. Let them know that you will never leave them nor forsake them. That every step that they take, God, that you will be right there with them. They will not go through this alone. Father God, the same way you healed my heart, my mind, and my body, Lord, I know you can do the same thing for them. Father God, I'm trusting you and believing that no weapon form shall be able to prosper. Keep them safe, Lord. Don't let no harm come upon them. Father God, these things I ask in your son Jesus' sweet and precious name. I do pray. Amen.